Does everyone have volume off? <laughs> Mine's off. Why? Confirm your volumes are off. See, I don't trust that. <laughs> okay. Because if you put the volume all the way down, whether you hit the mute, now it's like double fail safe. That's right. If your phone, if your if your computer goes off, I'm physically throwing it off the set. <laughs> so know that. Know that your computer will be in six pieces. So yeah. Okay, so turn it up just a little bit. Yours is going to go off guaranteed. I've never been able to control that. I have said to you, is your computer muted? You've said yes, and it has still gone off. I'm praying for someone to send me an email right now. Extra someone time. send me you're the, now. You're the one who's going to sound up. Oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, driven by Continental from the AT&T MLS Studios in Midtown Manhattan. I am Andrew Wiebe with my partners in soccer, David Goss, Matt Doyle, 12 days till CONCACAF Champions League. The fever is coming. Your temperature is rising. You might want to invest and a new television, and 23 days until Major League Soccer. But the big news today, guys, we can't, no banter, no BS, no cane talk, no nothing. <laughs> Two hours since the CBA Woo! was signed. Well, uh, I guess, yeah, that's when we're recording this, yeah. but when you're listening to it, it's six hours after a new collective bargaining agreement was agreed between Major League Soccer and the MLS Players Union. They have agreed on a CBA from 2020. That is, a uh, oh, yeah, right now. Through 2024, that's five years. It expires on January 31st, 2025. Checking the calendar, checking my watch, thinking back to historical precedent. What was the historical precedent for the CBA the last two times around? Well, it was right up to the deadline. To the very, very last second this time, three weeks to spare on an agreement. Congratulations, I just want to say, to both sides. We, like everyone else out there who loves Major League Soccer, we're waiting around, watching intently, wondering when will this get done, how will it affect what we all love, which is the soccer, and it won't. Having a job. Having a job. That's Everyone loves that as well. Uh, yeah, so I think both sides have big reasons to be happy. Both sides have kind of said in their public statements that we understood each other better this time around. They started meeting about two years ago. Negotiations uh, were in earnest, let's say, this summer on. But there was an understanding about priorities. There was an understanding about initiatives. There was an understanding of maybe where each side might give. And here we are. Signatures are. on the dotted line. Here we are. Apparently that trip to, uh, you know, I just want to say, before we go any farther and give you the details Stop. here. It's Don't talk about rural Kansas. You knew. Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're about to say. You're about to talk about the GM getaway. Exactly, man. That's where deals get done. You In go Peter out of Bernice's backyard. Yeah, man, out of the rolling hills. I'm assuming the Flint Hills, because, come on, you're not going to like. Oh, yeah, the, everybody knows the Flint Hills. Beautiful. Yeah. Just such a great place to come to an agreement. Flint, to Michigan? No. Flint. Flint Hills. Do you understand what Flint is? Yes, I do. It's a rock that's easily chipped that comes yeah. in like sediment that, you know, oftentimes is used to start fires. Yeah, no, I've heard of all that. There are many hills of this Do you variety. still use that in Wichita to start <laughs> fires on the I daily? I do on my chiminea in my... <laughs> In Sam Stachel's backyard, I should say. Right. All right, let's get to the details here. Spending increases. That has happened. We knew it would happen. It's kind of along historical lines, which is about 6.5% per year. This is mandatory spend. In 2019, it was 8490000 In 2024, the final year of this new CBA, it will be $11,643,000. Now, that is the salary cap. That is general allocation money. That is mandatory spend. That is about $600,000 per season. Bonuses are also up. Benefits for the players are also up. Those are good things. They like those. Uh, also, minimum salary is up. Senior roster players in 2024 will have to make at least $109,000. And reserve roster spots Sorry, will, I don't think that's right. What? Senior roster players in 2024? No, the, it's available spend, not mandatory spend, on $11.6 million. Uh, well, that's with... That's with uh, okay. That's with discretionary TAM, yes. which exists as well. Look, there are there's a lot of numbers. There's going tables on. out there. Go check them out. MLSsoccer.com. <laughs> the Athletic is doing good coverage as they always do. Oh on this wow! Sort of thing. Early plug. Hey, yeah. you know Sam Stachel took over my lease. So <laughs> hey. just as I owed with, him with GAM or discretionary TAM. Mm, did you charge him a broker's fee because that could that's, be illegal? Now it seems like it's illegal. I did not, but I really Slum should Lord. have considered <laughs> discretionary Lord. TAM or GAM. But the good thing was is that Sam had the discovery ah, on it. the apartment. So, so you didn't have to trade for anything. Right. So I didn't really, you know, couldn't really negotiate with anybody else on that one. Total spend 
at the low end by 2024, looking at like nine and a half million, mm. maybe a little bit more than that. Available spend eleven point six million plus DPs. So plus you can DPs. go way plus over DPs that yeah. plus they're way down at the bottom of the agreement. There is a under twenty two player initiative that's beginning in twenty twenty one. Sources say that like that has not entirely be flesh uh, been fleshed out, but it's looking like an initiative that's designed to bring more Ezekiel Barcos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Matias Pellegrini's, Diego Rossi's, yeah. to to into the guys. league, or maybe even uh, on the homegrown side too. Right, right. You know, maybe it's a Paxton Pomichol, maybe it's a David Ferrer. Oh, maybe, maybe it's you're able making to sure push that down their the next cap number, the next Gio Reyna stays yep. in MLS till he's 18 and mm-hmm. then gets sold to it. Oh, we're going to talk about Gio Reyna, by the way. Yeah, we, <laughs> we are going to talk to Nani. He has an incredible story that he told me in Los Angeles about how he became a professional. And it's not like, oh, I was the best player in my region. Everybody wanted me. It was I literally ran through the rain in jeans and like a button-down T-shirt to go to a training. They sent me home. I waited a year. I came back. I grinded. I gr- it's it's an amazing story. I'll let him tell that because I probably shouldn't. Uh, Alejandro Pozuelo also will stop by from those L.A. trips as well as Bojan. So those are coming back to the CBA. That 1.2 in TAM that every team got, now it's GAM. So that's where some of this flexibility comes in, and the players wanted that, and I think ultimately everything that happened here, both sides agreed to. Do we want to, do we want to expand on that and clarify? Because it's No, he's, he's running through it, and then we're going to get to oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the discretionary TAM, as spending increases, goes down, but right. it's still 2.8 in 2020. Free agency is now different. Instead of 28 years, it's 24 years or uh, or older, and you have to have five years of service. So that basically doubles the available pl- a pool of players that are now eligible for free agency, and there are now fewer limits on compensation. There are still compensation caps, but and maybe I'm you know I'm still kind of digesting this going through the legal ease. But I look at this and I think, okay, so if I'm under the max salary charge, which is you can check out at MLSsoccer.com or wherever where they have this information, I can now go basically anywhere within that range. So I don't have like, oh, it's only 5%. It's kind of based on whether you started underneath the max salary, were a TAM eligible player, were a designated player who are also now eligible for free agency. There's a lot of sort of limits, and we will see as time goes on how those are in practice as opposed to uh, just kind of down on paper. Charter flights. Eight legs required, required in 2020. You have to do it. A leg is one flight. It's one way. That will rise to 16 in 2024. So year by year, it's plus two every single year. And remember, there are 34 legs of away travel per year for MLS teams. But all CCL and Audi MLS Cup playoffs, that's required charter. You got to do it. There's no like, will we, won't we, is it, eh, eh, no, no, you have to do it now. So that's cool. And that's good. That also ought to help on the competitive front. This is maybe the most interesting part. And then we'll dig into the minutia here and kind of talk through it. Media deal revenue share. For the first time, player spend, salary cap, and GAM is where this money will reportedly go, will be tied to, in 23 and 24, the new media agreement deal that MLS will negotiate and sign uh, that will begin after the 2022 season. Here's the way this will work. Whatever the number is in 2022 that's coming into Major League Soccer. Add a million dollars to that. That stays within ownership. Anything above that number, let's just say it's 100 100 million. million Let's just say it's 100 million in 2022 is a TV deal. And then you add 100 million, that's 200. Let's say the next deal is for 300 million a year. The players will get 25% of that that will go into the salary budget or into general education money, both of which are mandatory spends. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that would be, let's say 25 million that would be distributed among the teams in that year. And that would up your mandatory spend. So that's a big deal, and that puts both sides on the same side of the table, basically, in these media rights deals and saying, we got to get the most money possible. Not that they weren't already on that spot, but there's now skin in the game for the players, and the league clearly thinks that that is important to have everybody pull in to the same, uh, the same place, essentially. So yeah. that's the like long and short of this. <laughs> I know that was a lot of information. So yeah, go ahead, we, we, have, we have it on the front page of MLS. Yeah, go read through it, sort of think through it. Let's just start here with you guys. What is the and, – and again, we got much more to come here. They got a news dump in MLS, the preseason result that kind of mattered. Piotti looks like he's gone, interviews. Susanna's going to come by, and we'll talk about the forward 25 jerseys. But this is the news of the day. What, 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 what do you care about the most here, Doyle? Uh, what stands I, out the most to you, at least? Well, if, first of all, just the fact that it got done. 
this early. It, it really does suggest that, that both sides were very, very happy with the deal. And obviously, um, as fans, first and foremost, I'm thrilled that like there's not going to be a delay. Like These teams are obviously going to have completely clear heads going into CCL and then going into the season, which is – that's the biggest thing. From a player's perspective, uh, free agency – getting it down to 24 and 5 now it's it's like slightly restricted free agency in that you can't go to a, a 2 million dollar deal but you can go to uh if you're on a rookie contract you can go from say 150 you want to just call this like the Julian Gressel bump yeah exactly you could go from 150 to the max salary plus 25k which i think would put him at about 650,000 this year if it had worked out like that um which it's is like what the Tim Parker deal. It was a Tim year. Parker deal. Miles Robinson could, you know, Walker ended up Zimmerman. Getting, walk, yeah. So like that's it's huge because I think it works for players who are already in the league, and it works for players who are coming into the league, and it shows how much I think um, the powers that be value the talent that we have here, be it via homegrown or via the draft. I, I think that like to me that's the the massive. Like that—that that is the big thing to take away from that. I also think it's going to make, frankly, it's going to make the off season much more interesting. MLS's silly season is, is fun, and um, getting getting to be more fun, and getting yeah. to be more fun. But like unlimited free agency signings per team, and more free agents, more good free agents out there. Uh, you know, bidding wars essentially. Like that's dope. I want I want to see that. Bidding wars with a cap. With a right? cap. That's the, that's the yeah. big caveat that remains here. And that's where you see negotiation. Each side has priorities. Yeah. Each side needs to get something out of it. And again, as you go through this, you can see in large part what both sides got out of it with the, you know, the common goal of growing the pie. Yeah. Yeah, we know the board. we know for at least on the player side what their major sticking points were coming into it. And it felt like the owners and them met halfway on all of those points, which is nice. It wasn't zero here and 100 there on any of them. Uh, the other thing that stands out as a fan, I think, is the flexibility. Changing all of the TAM into GAM and then it's slowly growing. The salary cap growing is TAM did a really good job of bringing players from outside the league into the league. Now owners have the, uh, sorry, GMs have the ability to do whatever it is they want, whether it's resign their own guys, sign other guys in MLS, or sign guys. You can still continue to use that money to sign guys from yep. outside of MLS. So it gives them more flexibility, which is really nice when you see what's happening, I think, in the league, which is teams are choosing to structure their teams in different ways. They're trying to build differently. It started with what the Red Bulls did. Now we've seen what Atlanta does. We don't really know what Miami will look like. This allows teams to be unique. I think a little bit more. And so for a fan, it's going to be nice to see, Hey, my team's a team that really likes to double down on our own guys and re-sign our own guys. Maybe a la what a Dallas will look like. That's what I was thinking. Where another time. team goes out and says, we really like bringing guys in from Colombia, from Argentina and from or Mexico at this age. The realities of our market, our situation, our growth pattern. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have an Academy that's churning out what FC Dallas's Academy is doing. So we're obviously going to spend our money on different things. We don't have a Paxton Pomical who we can say, yeah, this guy is both from an investment perspective and a first team perspective, a $500,000 player. Like we just, we can't go get that guy. So all of a sudden those doors are open. I am with you on that one. The mandatory versus discretionary and who's eligible for those pots. The switching of TAM to GAM. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's flexibility. I think it gives us more of an ability to look at decisions that are made by GMs or by sporting directors and say, okay, that's a little bit more along the lines of what you are trying to do and we can judge you on that as opposed to you're hamstrung by these certain ways that money has to be spent. Yeah. We need more of that. We need more of an ability to kind of see behind the glass and say, okay, that's why they're doing it. This was successful. This wasn't. Also, now knowing how much GAM teams have, yeah. like it's it's in the chart. Like yeah. you know, the, and I think apart that from selling players maybe or trades, right now those are public too, so we can pull that in as well. I, and I think that's that's huge, and I think it is a it will be an interest driver for the league. We we see it. With the the Premier League, we see it with La Liga, we see it with the Bundesliga, we see it with the NBA, like it, Major League Baseball with the Mookie Betts thing. Like the 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 moves you make in the off season are like they are almost bigger than than the season itself. Like there's complaints in the NBA right now that people like the off season more than they like the regular season, and and I think that that is an important. It's going to be an important driver of interest in MLS 
during these months when there's just not usually a lot to say about what's going on. So opening that up, making it clearer and and frankly getting like getting more people to to care about it and then to understand it, I think is huge. Absolutely. I also do like the under 22 player initiative, which by the way, it's, it's not finalized. This is all sort of like, I have that underlined twice in my notes here. It's all <laughs> like waiting for the final I's being dotted and T's crossed. But the general idea I do also like, because I, I think this league and Commissioner Don Garber was very clear about it. And the teams I think are starting to figure out how they want to do it has to become a selling lead to continue to grow, mm -hmm. to reinvest back in the rosters, to justify the academy spending that's happening. And I think that will come. But this is basically like a little bit of a cheat code to say, we know where we want to invest. It's kind of in the sense that Tam was, exactly. we need to rise these roster spots. We know to compete with Liga MX, we've got to do this. Well, they know that they need to sell players. And who do you sell? You sell young players. So let's incentivize our teams, our clubs, our GMs, our sporting directors. Let's make sure that they're thinking along these terms of, I need to go find prospects. Not because just I'm going to sell them at the back end, but because now I have a roster mechanism where I can gain an advantage if I get good players in that spot that both contribute to my first team and as well turn into long-term investment. Yeah, absolutely. Tam had a specific purpose, and it worked in that purpose. And now this is another plan to try and move it along, which is, as you said, bringing in young players. And young players are difference makers. Young players can be starters. Like, this isn't just sign a bunch of young guys, see if their value increases, and sell them. These are guys who are going to start for your team and be a factor, and it gives leniency for teams that want to use it more, want to use it less. We also don't know who have, how. Who have great scouting departments. Well, I was going to say. That's my advantage, and I, maybe I don't have the ability to use it. To MLS me. teams have invested so much in scouting over the past three or four years relative to what came before. And then so many teams have hired either sporting directors or GMs or technical directors who like not don't just have networks in South America and Europe, but are actually from South America and Europe. So the next time, you, you know, the next time you're, you're scouting, uh, looking for a Miguel Almiron, maybe you don't get him at 22 when he costs nine million dollars. Maybe you get him at 19 when he costs nine hundred thousand. Like that's what that's what this is about, and I think it's like ideal for MLS to create a gi potentially gigantic new revenue stream by getting these guys at a younger age playing them, developing them as players and assets, and then flipping them and starting the process, reinvesting, doing it all over again. And we've talked about it in this show over and over and over. To get the price of your assets to rise, those assets have to have a certain level of success. They have to justify the investment. And if you're now sort of incentivizing more of a numbers game to sell, you're saying, okay, we have a bigger pool because every team now gets these three additional sort of spots to focus on. You need that. It can't just be a kind of scatter shot, right? Like you can't throw a dart twice a transfer window. You have to have some kind of critical mass of players going out into other markets and proving themselves so that the players that you're going to invest in the future or you already have see their values rise. I'd also say, and we've talked about this a couple of times, but in terms of doubling down on investment. So you talked about Barco, but Barco is a designated player. Right. So he comes in as a kid. Now you'll have your DPs, and then they can come in and play alongside veteran players who sort of can help carry the load. It makes life easier for these younger guys and probably allows them to be more successful at an earlier age, which once again rises their transfer fee, allows you to sell at a higher level. Let, let's be clear here. That This one is not yet done. No, no. It's not, and it's if it does happen, it won't begin until 2021. Right. So there is some time for teams to sort of wrap their minds around this and push forward on it and maybe time to build out, you know, that's build scouting more infrastructure, yeah, find a figure few more out, targets. Get the right targets as well. And DPs, we should also add. Yeah, I was about to throw that Yeah, that, that the league, this is the wording in the press release, the league will have the right to limit the compensation for the third designated player. Now, we've sort of heard these rumblings to the maximum TAM salary. Unless the player is 23 years old or younger, in which case there will be no limit. So that is sort of a Barco application there. Mm -hmm. You could fill that spot in with Barco, and his number is going to be a more higher than TAM just on transfer fee amortization mm -hmm. alone. So that's, again, another sort of encouragement to spend on a asset Who's also a first team contributor, maybe even best eleven potential, but different than how we'd heard it rumored. Yes, because it doesn't not allow you to sign a Correct. guy over that. It just affects the number you can spend on it. You so you can't go out and get Javinko, Josie, and Bradley, 
But you maybe do, you can. Yeah, maybe you can. In but this you, world, you can because Michael's a tan player. Now, but you do have the ability, like Seattle did, to go out and get a third designated player over the age of 23. It's just a more restricted spend on that spot. Okay. Before we get to Nani and the news dump, of which there is a lot of things, Nacho Piatti might be leaving, and I'm not emotionally prepared for this. Mm-hmm. I don't get to, I mean, I get to say goodbye. Anything else you want to just sort of wrap into this conversation? We'll obviously accept any and all mail on this one, 401 MLS, extra time at MLSsoccer.com. Email us that way. Uh, anything here that, that needs to be sort of reinforced, anything here that you just think is deserving of a little bit more oxygen? We could throw a little mention in there that the minimum – salary that players can make will increase heavily over the course of this CBA deal. So a senior roster spot, the minimum will end in 2024 as being 109,000. And And if you're a Jack Elliott type, there are bonuses built in as well. Like that's one of the things that the players union has actually talked about the amount of money available to their players via bonuses. Now, if you don't, if you're thinking bonuses, what does that mean? We're talking about play bonus. You played in a game, roster bonus. You're on the 18 team win bonus, playoff bonuses, starting bonuses, regular season bonuses, like all of these, like, Hey, I play a game. I get X amount of money that Mm -hmm. comes in. That was already there, but it seems like the, the union in particular is saying we feel very happy about the increases there. So, yeah. So it just, if you're like, if you're a low draft pick and, and, and you hit, or you're a, you're signed from USL on a minimum deal, and you win the job. Mark Anthony K is a good example. Mark there. Anthony, the entire Red Bulls roster basically is a good example. Like th- there is more money to be made, um, so it's kind of a betting on yourself type of type of incentive for the players. Uh, I think that's like. I think that's pretty good. To and, and I think one of the things we felt when we saw these numbers is it's probably also market value for what these guys are worth. Yeah. So it's nice. It's nice for the players. And I think it's nice for the owners to operate that way. And it probably goes back to the original point that Doyle made of this deal got done pretty seamlessly, pretty quickly, because it felt like everyone came to the table with ideas and they really met in between yeah. on all of the ideas up and down. Yeah, there were not... Um the moments of uncertainty that we've had in previous CBA uh, waits, because look, we're not in the go- negotiation room, so I'm not going to say it's our, like we're just sitting around waiting, yeah, seeing what the details are going to be, seeing what the two parties agree with. I- I'll end it here. I really think that this media revenue sharing agreement that's the big one is massive because you you potentially are talking about a huge influx of money straight into the mandatory spend salary budget as well as GAM if that TV number can get to the point where basically everybody wants it to be, right? We all know that the growth of Major League Soccer and professional sports are just built on this model, comes down to what people are willing to pay for your TV rights. And so, look, now the players and the league are on the same side of that table saying, what do we got to do to get this into a place where not only is it going to be good for the bottom line, but it's going to be really, really good for the product on the field. There is more money to spend. There is more ability to go out and make a splash in the markets that MLS is starting to make a splash in. There's just more, and we know how important that is and how much it raises the quality of the league. We've seen it over the last couple years. So I'm really excited that that was something they were able to come to an agreement on. And last one I'd throw in is on the free agency, 24 years old, five years in the league. That says to me something that we see a lot, which is, Guys who were homegrowns that can't get playing time or aren't on the right team, you can now go out and be a free agent and find the right club. Before you're like prime, prime. And you don't have to leave Major League Soccer. So if you're a guy, there's a random example, but Henry Wingo, who we saw leave MLS, guys like that. Harry Ship had it, and eventually, although he can't. I like the the Wingo example. Yeah. (laughs) At 24, if they're not getting the playing time, if they're not in the right system, or a coach leaves. Think about Diego Fagundes. Well, I didn't want to talk about a guy who (laughs) is still a part of plans at his team. Yeah, but But yes, 100%. He's he's like, I think, an obvious example. He would be a starter on a lot of MLS teams, especially for guys who maybe get taken out of the academy into the professional team under one coach who leaves. You can then go maybe follow that coach to a team where he trusts you. So... I tip my cap to obviously the veteran players who led these negotiations to have the foresight to push for future players' rights who it won't affect them Mm -hmm. in the end. Um, I thought that was great, and I think it'll improve the quality of American players and Canadian players because it'll give them better opportunities at a younger age. And that's where you like the flexibility that a lot of this brings. And I've said this for years, and it goes exactly into what you just said, which is this league will be better when more players have – 
and teams, it's not just players, it's both sides, have the opportunity to get the players that they think fit what they're doing. And players have the opportunity to look around and say, that's the right situation for me, that team wants me, that team's going to use me in this way, and their career grows because of it. We just The last thing we want is for especially, especially domestic American and Canadian players to just kind of be in limbo situations where they can't get on the field, they'd be good enough to do it elsewhere, there's not an incentive for anybody to move them, so they're just kind of stuck. Yeah. And uh, look, I, I think we're going to get to Nanny right now, but I think I could speak for all of us in saying... Yippee, <laughs> the focus is on soccer now. Yippee, we can dive into all the, you know, legalese and numbers stuff and uh, salary cap BS that we love. And, you know, I don't know if you guys do, but this is what we they sit around and They talk wouldn't about. be watching this show. That's fair. <laughs> and we will do that, but we'll do that after Montreal or Seattle win CCL. Woo! <laughs> that's, a good, uh, that's a good segue. Nani, on how he it's made it as deep. a professional, an incredible story. Take a listen right now. Had Michelle, a good play by Delamaya. Nani takes it to the right foot. Back to the left. Nani! Ten minutes with Nani of Orlando City and many places before. Everybody knows you, man, and we could talk about so many things. But I want to talk to you about how you made it, how you got this far. In the U.S. and in Canada, we want to produce world-class players. We want to produce Nani's. So take me back, and I'm just going to choose an age. Let's say eight years old. What are you doing? What are you dreaming about? How do you get here? At that time, I was just walking around. Um, I think I start love the football when I was seven years old um, because of my brother. Uh, he was great at that time playing uh, with his friends. And he wanted me to, to follow his, his steps, so he was teaching me, but I was not really um, paying te- attention uh, for football. But one day, because of a friend in the school, he asked me, yeah, you are very good. Uh, why you don't come train with me in my club? I said, yes, I can go. I can go with you. He said, oh. Yeah, but the, the only problem is I go with my father and we just have two seats, we go in the motor. So you, you can go by walking, uh, but it's a little bit far. I said, no, no problem, I go. And <laughs> I, I, I had to go from Amadora to um, uh, Riboleira. For those of us who don't know, like how far? From one, one train station to the other train station. Yeah. So next to the the the, the trucks, the, the trucks. I was walking, but it was raining a lot in that day. So I was raining, uh, uh, running, running, yeah, with uh, shoes and jeans and like um, a shirt with uh, the bottoms. buttons, yeah. yeah. And I arrived there, and the guys were laughing. They asked me, "So, what do you want?" I just came to train. I'm a friend of uh, Sabino. Uh, he asked me to train and. But I need, I need, I need the yeah, boots kids and kid. Yeah, I mean, train. and it's oh, we don't have, we cannot give you because we just give to the ones who are already in the club. Uh, but okay, no problem. I have a short uh, under the the jeans, so no problem. And I took my jeans, I keep my my shoes <laughs> and my shirt, and um, I went to the beach, and then uh, all the the kids were laughing to me, and they say, oh. What the ridiculous! What this guy is doing? And then my friend was very upset and say, "Hey, what? What are you laughing? What are you saying? This guy here is very fast. Nani, sprint until there and then show them." And then me, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you see, it's very fast. <laughs> and they still laughing, making yeah. jokes, and the, the the coach called the the guys who was already in the team to one side and the ones who was doing the test to the other side. And um, I was doing tests with other kids, and the coach straight away saw me. I was I, I took the ball and started dribbling everyone, and then the coach said, "Oh, you are very good, but wh- how you come like this? You need how you go now back to back home? You need some socks and some clothes." Something and dry. Yeah, they <laughs> tried to, to to help me. They give me something dry. 
uh, and they, they, they told me to come back, they will uh, help me with uh, a lot of things. But it was far from home. I had to do this every day and no conditions to go. How far are we talking? Uh, it's, it's like uh, 45 minutes, one hour. Just five, walking, each way? Walking, yeah. Walking, maybe one and a half hour. Oh boy. But running. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, man, you get, that's yeah. how you get fit, right? Yeah. But, and then I, I, I give up for one year. And one day I was walking in, in my, my byro, in my street, and I saw like five friends was going with the bags in, in the back. And then I asked, well, where you go, guys? Oh, we are going to train in Masama, Real Masama. If, if you want to come with us, come on, join us. And then I said, oh, maybe not possible. I have to, I have to ask my, my mom. And they said, oh, it's okay. We, we just passed in your house. We ask your mother fasting and we go. And we asked my mother and my mother said, no, you cannot go. It's too far. No, 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 no. I don't want you to go with these kids. And then I said, okay, man, it's, just, it's just here. It's, it's fast. I go and I come back with them. Said, no, 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 no. And then I said, okay. And then I go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you do what you had to <laughs> and do. And then <laughs> I went with them. And happens the same. I trained with the, with the kids. And in the middle of the train, the, the, the coach came and said, hey, come, come, come with me. Come with me. Let's go down. And so what, what happened? Uh, just sign here. Sign here your name. And then, and then we talk later. And I signed. And they keep me. They said, okay, uh, you, did you have, do you have a document? I said, no, uh, we need to, my mother is, is doing uh, the papers, work. And I said, no problem, we're going to work the, that, we're going to help you. And they helped me, and from there. I mean, you make it happened. sound easy. From there, yeah. sporting and Man U. I mean, that has to be, that's an amazing, that's an amazing memory. Yeah, it's when you think back on that and how far you've come and what everything that you've done and you've accomplished, I mean, it's it's those little moments, right? It's I could I could stay here like one day telling you the whole stories, thing. Yeah. stories, stories, stories. It's never been easy for me. Every time something looks easy, something goes wrong. I need this, or it's not possible because of this, because of that. So even when I moved to sporting, uh, it was not easy. And I was not supposed to stay in the team. The coach told me, yes, it's not possible because um, we have already a players of your age and the old, the, 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 the old players are going to stay for the second season. Um, so it's no space for you. But what we can do is you can come here, come back on the preseason and you can train with these players and then you come back more strong to your team. And then I didn't want to be rude with the, the, the manager, and I said yes. And then I come back on the day, I train, and then after one month, they changed their mind because I improved so fast. Yeah. And they said, okay, I knew you're going to stay. I said, what? That's not what you said I to knew, me last time. I knew, I knew you are going to stay here. Really? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, keep training, how's you doing? We are just working with your team, and then all, all is going to be, be good. And then I was so happy that day believe and here you are so before we have to let you go i'm curious what your advice to other kids that are listening or thinking or hoping or wondering if they can one day maybe not be nani but be someone who is someone in this game what's your advice yeah what advice is um we have a, a, the proof of a, a story a real story me and my friends we went together to sport in lisbon to do the the the, the trials and my friend was studying a lot. Me, too, but I was very focused on football. And we didn't have money to take the, um, the, 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 the train to go every day. And one day I asked my friend, let's go. He said, no, 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 no. They don't pay my ticket. I don't have money. I'm not going. Um, I said, There's no problem. We go without money. We try. We, we run away from the, the, the ticket man. And um, he said, no, 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 I don't go. Today I don't go. I said, okay, you don't want to go. And this player, this, my friend, they was paying attention more to him because he was better than me. You know? Mm -hmm. Everyone was saying he was more strong, more fast he, on that time. Um, he stayed home. I keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. At the end, I stay. I, did, uh, I become a professional footballer. And him... He, 
ايش يو ونت تو سمول كلابس ايفري تايم جوينج داون ايفري تايم جوينج داون بيكو ونت يو جو تو ذا سمول كلابس اتس ديفيكال اند بروبلي توداي اي فيل سوري فور فور ذات ديسيجن بيكوز ات ديدنت بوش اور تراي ذات ون داي يا ذات ون داي يو نو ذات ون داي That's great advice for young people out there, for all of us, honestly. Nani, thank you so much for joining me, man. I would have sat here and done this for an hour, for two yeah. days, just to get all these stories out of you. Maybe one other time, all right? Yes, thank you very thank much. You. It was a pleasure. Thank you. How can you not be inspired? You know, Nani has this kind of, uh, I don't know, on the field, sometimes he can look a little stone-faced, uh-huh. a little uncaring. I didn't know what I was going to oh, get out of that interview. Oh, you were scared of him, is what you're I saying. I wasn't scared, but I was afraid that maybe Nani would hit me with what I would expect from sort of like European soccer stars, which is I've, I've never heard a, of you. I don't know who you are. I've done a million interviews in my life. <laughs> I've never, I don't share the intimate parts of my life because that's just not the way it works there. And then he sat down and he like basically ripped it open for Told me. Told that story. Yeah, I mean. But now he lives in the most magical place in the world. Right. That's true. So he's it's just an, happy. It's an eight-year-old's dream. Yeah, it's Charlie Davies' dream. It is Charlie Davies' dream. <laughs> Charlie Davies, by the way, will be back. Just uh, not until week one or after week he's, one, I should he's say. He's currently in, still in Disney World. He just lives <laughs> in, in Disney a month, World. So uh-huh. he can't make it back. Here is your preseason result that mattered. Kind of. <laughs> Minnesota United, three. Charleston Battery, two. Hassani Dotson with a goal. Um, Robin Ludd with a goal. Nice goal, too. And then Thomas Chacon, speaking of young prospects with potential sell-on, got the game-winning goal here. And so it was a good result for Minnesota. Yeah, whatever, whatever. But really, I use this to get to this news, which is Adrian Heath says, the process to sign Boca Juniors star Emmanuel Reynoso is, quote, ongoing. He took encouragement, did Adrian Heath, from Reynoso being held out of games the last couple of weeks with Boca, despite the fact that they have a little bit of a, uh, a numbers game going on with the squad. They don't have as many as they would like, let's say. Mark Watson has been in Argentina trying to get this deal over the line. They are saying there's kind of a date that they're looking at that they wanted to have it done by, and that date is now approaching, whether that's like real or negotiations, whatever. Sign Reynoso, please. We can't make it happen, but... Damn it, I'll try to speak it into existence because if they sign Reynoso, I mean, that's the Major League Soccer that I want to be a part of. It, well, if they sign Reynoso, there's multiple things going on. One, if they sign him, I would argue they've had as good an offseason as any team in MLS because I don't think they've lost things of heavy value from last year that they haven't replaced or increased. Maybe goalkeeper of the year, Vito Manone. For sure, but once again, and we've discussed Ico, this on Ico the show. Ico Parra was the goalkeeper of the year. Yeah. And it's the most replaceable position in MLS. On top of that, they lost Darwin Quintero. If they bring in Reynoso, who's eight years younger. I'm feeling like if they make a final, Reynoso might play in it. Yeah, I would agree. You would hope he's a starter. Yeah. Make some assumptions there, but I think there's You added one. Chacon last year, so you give him time to settle in if this goes down. And then Angelo Rodriguez wasn't a go-to starter for your team, so... Even if and you brought in Luis Amarillo, kind of a like for like. And even if Amarillo doesn't give you more, nine. Mason Toy being the starter for the year is probably better than what you were getting from Rodriguez. So I don't think they lost anything. But one of the things we talked about before we came on here is just like where MLS is. A few years ago, when DC signed Lucho Costa, and you were like, wow, this guy's 22 from Boca Juniors. The league is changing. Gonzalo Verón, a young guy, has played in Copa Libertadores. Like, this league's never going back to what it was. To go from that to Reynoso is a lockdown 24-year-old starter for Boca Juniors, and Minnesota United is going to bring him in late in a transfer window to change their team. Like, this league has jumped in yeah. the last few years, and that is one of those stark moments. I mean, he's a, he's a $10 million player for the arguably the biggest club in the Americas. He's a playmaker for Boca Juniors. Just saying, the playmaker for Boca Juniors, if you've followed soccer at all for the past 50 years, you know what? You know what that means. Um, and the fact that it, like, it's not – like Minnesota United is not a glamour club. He's not being linked to the galaxy here. This isn't – you know, It's not same old, same old. Yeah. Oh, you know, at LA always Minnesota, and everybody. The, and this is, what, this is part and parcel of, of what we've seen in MLS over the past couple of years. Well, really, the, the past 12 months. Like 15 teams have set their record for new transfers. Like Columbus Crew. Spent eight million dollars, I think it was, on the playmaker from Tigris, which was the club of the decade in North America. You know, like FC Cincinnati went out and got a 26-year-old who sold for 20 million dollars two years ago. Was on the fringes 
of the, the Dutch national team. These are players, if one of these guys had been signed five years ago, Simon Borg would have had us do three straight months of content just about that player. Now it's ha- it feels like it's happening every week. Oh, and by the way, and you keep going on this trend, like a little bit younger, like, and Luis Almeria is another one. By the way, he's he's a Velez player. He's been on loan. He led Ecuador in scoring. Like he's 24 years old. Congratulations, Minnesota. But LAFC go out and sign like half of the Conma Bowl Olympic qualifying teams, and we don't really say much about it. We're like, ah, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, Jose Simfuentes. After West, ah. uh, after West is wearing the armband. Yeah. For for Colombia, Segura is a starter. You know, like Rossi. I think he's got two goals so far in the in the. Like it's it's wild. It's great. It's beautiful. And then they have two guys in Palacios and Rodriguez who, like, Ecuador and and Uruguay aren't even using them for the U23s because they're too good. They're they're full national teamers already. Decent. Decent. Ah, you know, we're excited, but now time to bring the mood down just a little bit. (laughs) Nacho Piatti, pictured in the locker room via the Twitter account of the San Lorenzo president. And the rumors are, looking more like reports, going straight from Stashkult to Tenorio. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Oh, that's I'm hoping that's the last one I make. No, nope. on that reference, yeah, that, that'll never he's die. Like, that was David driven it into. That'll me. never die. He's driven it in. Hey, I let you call him Bird Dog. That's true. Uh, so, uh, that Nacho Piatti is headed back to sort of the club that has his heart, and we've we've talked about this on the show. All the rumors right now. The rumors are that Montreal would get back in return. Eighty uh, percent of the rights of Emmanuel Maciel, who's a 22 year old central midfielder, hasn't got a ton of time. Uh, in the first flight in Argentina, and then next year maybe. That's, again, reports. We don't have anything official here that Nicholas Fernandez, a center forward who's 23, would arrive a year from now. At Defensa and Justia, he had about 10 goals last year, and he just made the move, I think, before the last season to San Lorenzo. Which is the one thing that's too bad about this from a Montreal point of view is, like, they don't have a ton of cap flexibility this year. Their attack's kind of locked in. Fernandez would have helped them upgrade at center forward yeah. where they need it. I'd say in central midfield, they're pretty strong. At least they're starting 11. That one set. feels like a depth and yeah. see what happens. So it's unfortunate of, yeah. that it's not flipped because then they would actually get some use from it this year. But yeah. everything we've heard is Piatti had already kind of settled himself towards going to Argentina. His family is back there now. So it makes sense. Also, San Lorenzo is the team of Pope Francis. So if he wants to be sainted. If he wants sainthood, he has to get there again to win another trophy for them. He had to leave uh, right before the Libertadores last time. Yeah. Yeah. So he needs – I mean, sainthood is for life. Look, Tabla's back. Everything. Aquanquo is back, and he had a nice season for them last year. He definitely has double-digit goal potential. Lapalainen, I think, has double-digit goal potential. Aruti has double-digit goal potential. Left wing is not a problem for for Montreal. Correct. There is some questions up top, uh, but I think between Aquanquo and Aruti, you feel like you can get through, and Bojan, a full season, uh, yeah. It sucks, though. Let's talk Piatti. Let's not talk about the future. Let's talk talk about Nacho. Are we giving him the, the farewell already? Yeah. Are we sure Should this we is wait him? Before Should we, we give, give him, him the farewell now? No, let's wait because we've been down this road before. Yeah, once uh, or twice. Uh, let's that's, wait. Fair, that's fair. That's very fair. Nacho, I love you. Don't <laughs> leave us. Kevin Baxter. Producer Anders, by the way. Sorry, producent in Swedish. Wow. <laughs> yeah. oh, Says like that we'll do it. a full Piatti episode appreciation when he ever, whenever he does. Mm-hmm. When officially and if. Leave. I mean, yeah. like, uh, well, one day he'll retire. That's or, yeah. uh, well, bad news for LAFC and their CCL campaign. Kevin Baxter at the LA Times uh, reported to that Bob Bradley confirmed that Adama Diamande fractured his fourth metatarsal in his right foot in the NYCFC preseason game. He will miss the CONCACAF Champions League games against Leon to get it started. Me too, man. Me too. And uh, he's also going to miss the start of the MLS <laughs> More season. More of a fifth metatarsal guy myself. But uh, anyway, please continue. How, can you say so you're commiserating with him right I now. Am. You know exactly what Fourth what metatarsals are for the young. Yeah, true. Fifth metatarsals when you're an experienced veteran. <laughs> um, they're going to have to use some of their uh, newfound salary cap relief to get the man a cane. Uh, I mean, <laughs> th- this stinks because at their best, I think LAFC were at their best when when – Diamande was was on the field last year. He can do things that nobody else on the roster can do, and I include Carlos Vela in that. Carlos Vela can do everything, basically. Not, he can't play center forward like no. that. Diamande had some goals in the playoffs and leading up to him where he just basically like got the ball in a tight space and was like, nah, screw it. I'm running through you yeah. en route to a goal here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with LAFC because we all kind of thought that Diego Rossi was going to be sold and it looks like that's not going to happen this window. Yeah. Though I believe the the transfer window is still open in Italy 
and thought that one closed, which is why the Anthony Robinson deal. Oh, you're right. Italy closed, England closed, but yeah. there are a couple Alcohol. in Europe that are still. Well, anyway, it looks like Rossi's still going to be there. Brian Rodriguez, also a DP, obviously still going to be there. Uh, Carlos Vela, obviously still going to be there. So, do you think that the playoff experience from last year changed the idea of start Vela as a false nine and let him float and maybe start Rossi as a false I was, nine? I was just going to say, why not just push Rossi up into that? Because that's not what he did last year when Dio went out. So, I, I, I wonder I if they felt... It didn't work, or the ball didn't fall their way. I mean, the other option is you still bring one of the two younger ones off the bench, and y- you sign another center forward. Whoa, I'm not BWP's, here for Danny Musovsky. BWP's been, yeah, right. B- BWP's been in camp. But apparently has left. He, he has left? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's but you could bring someone back in. But maybe, but maybe now's the time you say, okay, well, actually, now we need you. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what Bob Bradley and John Thorrington and Will Koontz and it, that club does. It would go against who Bob Bradley is, I think, to bring someone in to start at that spot for these games. I think you're right. It would go to what he does, which is I I trust all these guys. Yeah. They're my guys. I can figure it out with them. And it would be not – I thought playing Vela at the nine wasn't the right decision because I actually thought it took away some of his threat because okay, he had that inability to run at guys. And he still floats off the right wing. But Rossi is a field stretcher. I mean, he's just pure speed. If you can get him to just run the line a little bit and move defenders a little, it seems like the most natural replacement. You'd like to see Rodriguez then replace some of the like goal dangerous aspects that Rossi brings. Mm-hmm. And he didn't necessarily do that last year, though he, he had flashes where it was like, oh, he definitely can. And, of course, we saw it against the U.S. We'll see what uh, L.A. do. Our CCL preview episode is going to come on February 17th. Charlie Davies is a late ad for that one. So it's the three of us and Charlie Davies nerding out on CCL. I cannot wait for that one. Inter Miami or not in CCL, Paul Tenorio says the Rodolfo Pizarro deal might get over the line soon, that the personal terms have been agreed, but there's still the buyout to figure out. Just FYI, trying to drive some traffic right now. Got to call him at the side on Inter Miami. Basically why I don't think they should worry about not having all the three DP spots filled. First of all, they were waiting for the CBA stuff, I assume, to shake its way out. Second, why rush it? Get the right guys. Don't fill a spot that you can't unfill when you're into Miami Except and when the summer comes. They've you can get whoever said, you want. But they've said they will use them. I know they have. So I know it, they have. It looks like they're going to use the second one on Pizarro if that gets over the line. Every indication I'm just saying, is that don't tell fans to be upset that they oh. haven't when they were the ones who came out and said, we will fill all three spots before the I'm season. I'm saying don't be upset because it might be the best thing for your long-term roster build. But look, I was on the side of the camp that was like, we're getting Galacticos, baby. David Beckham's Rolodex, South Beach, Miami, new club. The Moss brothers and the ambition. I thought we would. Maybe we will. Maybe it'll be the summer. Maybe we aren't so, reading the, tr- the tea leaves right. Just, just to throw this out there. It, if you want to sign a game-changing player at that level – the summer is easier 100%. when they are out of contract and their European team can replace them. If you are looking in January, you are looking at guys, it's and this limited. isn't a knock, at Cavani who aren't starters with their team right now, which may not be what they want in that role. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, we'll see. TBD. Uh, Sounders announced they have signed the defender that we've been talking about for a while, Yaimar Gomez Andrade. Tam signing from Union de Santa Fe in Argentina. He's a tank. From all, El Tanque. The, yeah, he, he, he looks. He is a, he's a little big, Cascadia he's a class dude. between tanks. Yeah, he's a big dude. So uh, that is, should be a good signing for them. Uh, Nico Adero, though, this is not good. Returned to Uruguay to be treated for a tendonitis issue. He's going to rejoin the team in Mexico. So you hope that doesn't last long term. But it seems like they are not too concerned about this. He wants to go to Uruguay to have it treated. Got to get it handled. So go down there. Join us back in Mexico for preseason. Uh, Adrian Regatin. We talked about him in relation to FC Cincinnati. He's been out of contract. I think basically his Turkish club got relegated and weren't paying him. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, he, has more than a, he has more than 100 games in Ligoon. He's goal dangerous at times. Remember He's before the show started the where I asked you all to mute all of your things? Uh, yeah, I got, you know. 
notifications on the phone. I Who thought, even puts their phone on volume anymore? You're I literally don't. my mother yeah, right now. I don't. Yeah, if your phone makes any kind of noise, you are just an old It person. is embarrassing. Not like that. I guess I my phone is so forward. broken, I permanently leave it on do not disturb uh, and just ignore the entire world rather than have alerts go Worth off. noting from FC Cincinnati in the preseason, uh, Kubo, the, the first DP they signed, Yuya. he's actually Yuya Kubo. He's been playing on the left wing, it seems, and then drifting underneath. So it looks like He'll be one winger, and then... Regaton will be another on the right, probably. That's where they see him, maybe and, centrally, but when you watch his highlights, most of his goal probably, dangerous moments yeah. come from the right. And then our guy, Loka. Yeah, be, Loka. Oh, yeah, our guy, Loka. Yeah. He'll be the uh, center forward. Yeah, it's a big change. Big up, Loka. It's a big change. We'll see about the 10. Jared Nykamp says it used to be... What he, with, with words? He said it used to be a need, and now it's a wish. But with you this said it. With Medunian as a deep-lying playmaker, and then now with the firepower they've brought in up top... Just have guys who cover gra- – Alan Cruz is going to be one of the starters yeah. in there. Get a, Just use a second guy like that. Just cover a ton of ground, win second balls off who the connects. front line, yeah. cover space. Frank, I mean, Frankie Amaya showed some stuff last year. He has a chance because they haven't brought anyone in. He has a chance to, to prove it this preseason. He started with the first team, I believe, on Wednesday. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Pablo Piatti. Different Piatti. Mm-hmm. He plays for Espanol in France as a winger. He's Argentine as well. And you linked to – what did I say? Spain. I said France. <laughs> yeah. You know, common to name yourself. Uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this is a guy who fits exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for a playmaker Toronto on the wings. The club. I don't yeah. know if I said that as TFC. a confused France and Spain. And, and they have said that the DP spot that they opened up with Michael Bradley, they'll use on an attacking player. They've called it a 10, but that doesn't mean anything because Pasuelo can swing in those spots. Piotti is like a win now signing. He's 30 or 31. 31, something like that. Um, feels, a little, feels a little Victor Rodriguez. Yeah, which yeah. makes sense with where their roster is and where their big name players also, are. Also, he's a dude that I've loved watching play all these years, so I would be pumped if this happened. And that's what's important. And that's What's uh, some homegrown news here. Our number one homegrown on extra time. Tom Bogert. His sources say that Winston Reed is not going to happen for Nashville. Nah, but Aaron Schoenfeld might come back from Israel. I'm Israel Chai. Yeah. All right. Time to take a listen to Bojan. Got to sit down with him in L.A. So uh, take a listen to that. We'll be back to talk about the forward 25 jerseys with Susanna Collins. Still going from distance. It's spectacular from Bojan as Montreal take the lead in Toronto and the former Barcelona man fires in a spectacular first MLS goal 10 minutes with Boyan everybody knows that name Montreal Impact welcome to the league happy to have you thank you what were your experiences last year great I was uh, was good to come here I came in the end of the season and um was good for me to to know the league, to know the team, to know the club, and uh, now I'm happy to start the season from the first day, the preseason, and uh, yeah, like days like like today, you know that you feel that proud to be in the MLS. Do you feel that the break is too long for you? We hear people say that all the time. Well, there needs to be a shorter break for the players. And I heard somebody the other day say, actually, I like the break because I can actually relax with my family and I, yeah. I get more than two weeks to see them. Yeah, well, for me, it's strange because in Europe, um, like you you have like the, sh- the break is short, but um, like you have like uh, in the winter, you have one week and during the year, you have maybe three, four weekends that you don't play and uh, and you have like three, four days. Here, uh, you start the season, pre-season, and it's long season, you know? So, uh, yeah, three months is a lot, but uh, I prefer to play football. I prefer to be with the team, you know, but you need you need to enjoy if, if they give you three months. And when you get back, you'll be with Thierry? Yeah, we already started the pre-season. How do you feel about that combination? A guy that you know from your career yeah. has now made the transition? Yeah, strange for me the first days because he came in Barcelona my first year and um, it's the first time in my career that um, the coaches was a teammate, you know. So, but it's it's good. I'm happy for that because I can learn from one of the biggest uh, players in the world and uh, not only me, the team to to have him as a as a coach. It's important for to build a good uh, a good project. 
What do you remember from your time as teammates? Yeah, I remember him um, when he came in Barcelona. He for him also was a big time because he used to play in Arsenal, where the fans, the journalists are completely different, you know. So he came in Barcelona and everything was crazy. The fans, the journalists every day. And um, yeah, with me, he he was close to me every time in the dressing room, on the pitch. Uh, he took care of me and, uh, and I really appreciate that. Who was your biggest influence within that dressing room in Barcelona? Who was the person that you were the closest to or who you took the most from that you've kind of carried on? Yeah, Thierry was one of them. Um, Iniesta, Piqué, uh, the players, what I know also, you know, when they were young. What were the lessons that you learned? What were the things that you still think about, the things that you might pass on to younger players? Yeah, it's, uh, I learned a lot. Uh, actually, you know, now, uh, so when I start playing in Barcelona with 16, you can play, you're ready to play football, but you are you are not ready to to hold all the pressure that um, that is around you, uh, especially out the pitch. And uh, yeah, mm, now the young players, I think uh, they can feel the protection for the team, for his teammates, um, and you understand with your personal experience. Someone can say to you, listen, don't do that, don't do that. But uh, I think you need to do it without advice because you learn when you, when, uh, when you miss something, when you, when you say, oh, I'm wrong, I need to change this. When you're 16 and you walk into a locker room, I, I don't feel like there's any comparable for a citizen, you know, a non-professional soccer player. Like if I'm 16, I'm more than likely not going to walk into, say, you know, a job where it's just me and a bunch of 30-year-olds at the very top of the profession. It has to feel like a shock. Did it feel like a shock to you to walk in there? Did it feel like a natural progression in your life? Of, this is where I'm supposed to be. I belong here and it's not weird. Yeah. You mean in the beginning? Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, 16, when I was 16, I wasn't mature enough to yeah, handle that I sort understand, of situation. Yeah, I understand what you said, but uh, it's like uh, when you when you feel in love with one girl, you don't choose this. No? If you feel in love with 16, 17, and, uh, and you are with, it, get, with this girl 10 years, and someone say to you, oh man, that age, you need to enjoy, you need to, you know, yeah, but I, wh what I can do if I felt in love with, with a girl? You don't choose these things. This is the same. So when you start playing with 16, 17 in a professional football, you don't choose this. You play, you enjoy playing yeah. football. And the football chose you to, 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 to put you there, you know? And you are prepared for that. What do you make of the soccer here? What As you, the tactical side of the game here, the physical side of the game here. In MLS. In MLS, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's a league where it's growing. Uh, it's a competitive league. Good teams, good players, um, good managers. It's a league um, that you feel the ones that are involved in the league, they want to grow. They're open to understand better football. They, they want to learn. And that's good. CCL, CONCACAF Champions League. I'm, I love it. It's bizarre. It's weird. You'll find that out, I'm sure. You got games coming up quick. Yeah. The Impact have a history in this tournament. Yeah. This is not UEFA, but it's our version. Are you, have you thought at all about the opportunity there? Have they talked to you about that in Montreal? Yeah, we know. Uh, we know that that is important for us, uh, for the club. Um, we achieved a good trophy last year that uh, it's giving us to it's giving us the possibility to enjoy this tournament. Um, like you said, it's coming early. We have uh, like in ten days three games, two Concacaf game and the first game on the league. That's why we are training already, preparing ourselves the, not only for these games but um, 
for all season that we want to be a competitive team. We want to we want to be a strong team. All right. Thank you, Boyan. Thank you very much. Looking forward to a full season of Bojan. Whoa, Matt oh, Doyle. Change. Looking good. Whoa, that's an able bodied Matt, not Matt Doyle. That Matt, is no Susanna Kane. Collins. No Kane here, Bella. How many metatarsals do you <laughs> have for Okay? Because if you have they one, you're intact. still better than him. Yeah. All intact, you we guys. Have, I'm very there, happy to report. There, is it five metatarsals per foot? That would make sense. No, I think uh, there might be six. Might be six. Should have paid more attention in anatomy. So I'm going to say there's thir- at least minimum 30. Oh, you think each metatarsal? Intact- I don't think a metatarsal is just like a. Each I don't one know time. what a metatarsal <laughs> is. Okay. I think metatarsal is one of those fake things they made. We're out. still trying to get our hands on these jerseys. We want them. We would like them. I am. Uh, let's just say everybody knows that they were. Out a little bit early. They were. Via alternative sources, and you may have gotten a sneak peek, which we also got. And when I got the sneak peek, I was kind of like. Oh, yeah, you know, these are pretty good. They're all right. There's some that I like more and some that I don't like very much. But after seeing them from afar on actual human bodies, I'm just going to say it. And you might say, oh, he just has to say this, but I don't. That I really like the forward 25 jerseys. I actually think that the stripes work on the vast, vast majority of them. I like the throwback to the early 90s. And you can remember the U.S. Men's National Team kits that had these. I think it works. I like it. I wasn't at the Forward 25 event. I had the invite, but had a... That makes you even cooler, though. No, it you were like, I don't think it does. It does. You were like, he went out of his way to I say wa- he was can I, like, It was a hot ticket. Like People were trying to get in. There was a massive line, and like Weeby's just like, nah, I'm uh, good. Well, I was, um, <laughs> I was scrubbing red sauce off a child's face at that time. Did you know I have a kid? Also super cool. Of, of, of the childhood... Thing that I raised. I thought I was, yeah. but I guess I'm not. All Reading right. about tell us about the Tell us about the event, Susanna, and then we'll get into kind of rating uh, our jerseys on top of the heap. Just fine and not personally <laughs> my thing. I don't want to give you too much FOMO. No, give it to me. Was it a C or B scene sort of thing? Was it a like, I'm okay, too cool this is for my, school thing? This is, I have been working at MLS now for four years. Um, and Congratulations. Thank Muzzle you. Top. Thank you. Mm. This is going to be my fifth season. Wow. That's like, crazy. So you're actually, you could be a free agent at the end of this I year. could be. Thank yeah. you. Boom. Congratulations. Yeah, Let's that's good. I, I am and a, I'll take 15%. That was, that was a, I was a free agent on the previous yeah. CBA term. It was so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was so good. You're um, old. Yeah. No, you guys, this event was awesome. Um, it w- it was huge. This venue was massive. Where the actual fashion show was was this like gigantic space. And then there was like a party space as well. And this it was packed. When I tell you that people were lined up around the corner to get in and like people were having trouble getting in and asking if they could like help a fella out. And Susanna like, knows because she walked right past those people. No, straight can into I the door. do you want to hear the funniest story? I got in. So I was having trouble getting in. I was there with Jillian Zakovitz and we were kind of doing like a behind the scenes sort of vlog. And we got there and the person checking in was like, oh, um, I don't see your name on this list. And I'm like, I know I, I've seen emails where my name has been <laughs> on a list. And I'm, and she's like, we're going to have to go check. You're going to have to go wait in that line. And we were like, what the heck? Gary Stevenson Whoa, walks big, up yeah. behind First us, you and got he was, timed, and then you big, and then them. he was like, he was like, ladies, and I was like, Gary, we can't get in, and he was like, what? And he was like, no, he's let them in. So Gary Stevenson Boom, muscled us in. We walked right past the line. We got our credentials. It was great. Um, you turned to all the people in line. You said you want to get in. Suck call us, us up. Suck us. Call us. I see what you did. Gotcha. It's a I good. Gotcha. Here um, for this. Sorry. Just no, it was, it was, <laughs> it was going back to my point. Like it was like, like in 2016, when I first started working here, there's no way that MLS would have had the bandwidth to pull off an event like this, of this size. And, to kind of see where we are now and how many people showed up and how many people care and and wanted to be at this event was really awesome. And it was it was a packed house. It was a young, hip, diverse crowd, like all sorts of folks there. The people that they had walking in the show, like DeAndre Hopkins. Boom, legend. And seriously. I mean, and like Colin Hanks and I mean, Ninja. Ninja. I mean, it was like all over dude, sort of, perfect. Yeah, different it spectrums. was like, it was, yeah. they, they hit every When I first saw the note. list, I, it was, it seemed random, but then when it was all together, it felt like there was sort of a method to that madness. It yes. was like, okay, well we hit a lot of different places, a lot of different sort of profiles yes. and everybody seemed to be like really into it, which was the whole point of, of modeling the jerseys. It was great. The jerseys looked sick. 
they I honestly like the fashion show itself was really really cool. Right. It was very what, well. Produced. What was your big? I didn't realize I'd like it this much until Columbus. I saw it in perp. Oh really? really? The black yes. one? Because I was I'm skeptical. Who was their model? Uh, my Katie girl, with Katie with them. Who can I tell you? She, I saw her before the show, and she was kind of like she's like I'm a little nervous, <laughs> and I was like you just gotta own it, girl. You know, like mm. just and she did this little hair flip. Oh. Kill, everybody like had, killer. Everybody had the signature moves. Killer hair flip. And I know she listens to Extra Time. So Katie, my girl, oh, like, that's crushed Katie. it. Crushed uh, it, crushed it. Life, but Katie. the Columbus kit, um, the jersey, when I saw it online, I was kind of like, ooh, there's a lot. What is this pattern? It was busy. What's going Felt a little on? bit busy. And then when I saw it in real life, it looked dope. Like it was, it was really, really cool. So we're person. borrowing a call up term here. And if you don't subscribe to the call up, you should probably remedy that. Jillian Sakovitz, Susanna Collins. Whoop, whoop. Every other Monday, right? Every other Monday. Yeah, so it's like a, it's like a little bit of a snack, and of course you get Susanna right here in extra time as well. Woo. Let's just go with starting the jerseys that you are here for. Here for. I am, and, and you only get three. Your okay. top three. Oh, oh I like this. Us. I know. I didn't warn you. I like you. this. I, I like this. I like this. I like this. Oh my gosh, I like this a lot. Number my first that I'm going to throw out there is the Philadelphia Union kit. I love the sort of hand-drawn snake. I think that the golden shoulders yep. and the navy blue. Really, really works well. I love that look. Yep. I think it's okay. very cool. That Am was I going one next? Of my That's on my list. Uh, Minnesota United. With yes. Mm-hmm. Shout out to N- NASL. They do it the, right. Uh, yeah. The I love the gray. They like it's it so right. smooth and the little bit of touch of blue. They so do it I'm right. For that. Love it. Um, okay. I am here for the Red Bulls. The uh, black and red. Oh, the Sith. That is the, the Sith best. Kit. It is so fierce. Yeah. yeah it is so fierce. It definitely feels like a little bit of like Darth Vader, like yes. Darth Molly, or maybe like the Uber stormtroopers that great. they have. I, I just think it really fits with their sort of like Looked personality. Great. As a club, as well. Imagine you looked up and the, the full supporter section had those on. Like that's, that's intimidating. That's yeah, there's super an intimidating. intimidation angle there that's too. That's a look. I am going to because I don't want to steal one that I think that you will probably like, Dave. No, no, go say whatever you okay, want. Okay, I like FC Dallas. I think that okay. the hoops and not the sort of block hoop, but the stroke, the s- brush stroke mm-hmm. hoop is really, really sharp, and I like the red top, blue shorts combo that they go mm-hmm. go with, and the white short looks fine, too. But that would be uh, my second of the ones like I'm that. definitely here for. I and like it. Am I up now? Your pressure is on you. <laughs> I like FC Cincinnati's oh! with the cut blue down the middle. hey You've got opposite sleeve, matching opposite side. Unexpected. Hard blue down the middle right yeah, there, right that there. One. I like that. If, I like that. It feels a little bit like it's fresh. not completely like because the old Blackburn was the four quadrants. But kind of like the old Blackburn that I, I thought was really cool. What are you bringing up? I'm sorry, that was like way oh. early days. Susanna, keep it going. Um, San Jose. Mmm, the you city like flag. Because it surprised yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. It totally surprised me. I was like, wait, what? And then I'm looking at it, and it's it. I love, I love the. It's got that really great like retroy yeah, throwback feel. feel. I you. I can't remember what jersey you said this about, Goss, but it was such a good point. You're I, like in like a few years, this is going to be like oh yeah, super cool. Like it'll be like a great throwback, yep. and because it already has that. I think feel. it was the RSL one. Yes. that I was saying that about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the yellow shorts, which I also uh, really yes enjoy love that one. the yellow yeah. shorts. Uh, and my final here for this selection is going to be you stole my Cincinnati shout uh look I, I want help sure why not but I'm not gonna I got like you it. I'm gonna pull it right back from here now and I'm gonna say the Colorado Rapids uh especially with the blue shorts I saw Kai Kamara tweet out that look mm-hmm. with the blue shorts I think it's one of the most iconic just like classic Great. looks in the league uh yeah that's gonna and be. I don't think we've said yet the numbers which we've seen we've said it over and over oh, the yeah. numbers look are great. sick so, that adds to it. Anders says we're chewing up time. Here. Can I say like four <laughs> right now, real quick? Go. I always like Just Vancouver's cover. I always like Vancouver's cover. Vancouver's, Vancouver's is done. Uh, I like what NYCFC had done with the texture. Yep. Less Mont- into that one. Montreal's is class. Definitely into that one. And then I was going to finish on I, Outlier, really like this Houston jersey. Oh, that I one's, love that this one's, black and orange texture. It's not for me. Nope. It Same. looks a little bit All like when you're day. growing up and it's the book that you have to stare at and kind of like And in person, we be it's even more jarring. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, a lot. Now I do like the RS, I do like Ooh. the RSL one. It's a competitive advantage, yeah. this Houston Dynamo one. Confusion yeah. will reign <laughs> on the field. Susanna, you had one more that you have to go with. Uh, I named one more, one more. I know. I was I was gonna go Vancouver, but you kind of stole it. Um I'm gonna you know what? I'll go with Portland because um it's it's just it's classic. I like the collar. Jack Jewsbury rocked it. 
yesterday. Ooh. He looked great. After he got a Spara slice. Yes. <laughs> Messed up. <laughs> Messed up. Uh, like, and people who were yelling at us about the Chicago Fire one, they did not have their new identity in time for the creation of these, which you probably mm-hmm. know by now takes about two years. So that's why they do not have an EQT jersey. These are available at lessstore.com. Go check them out. We will continue to uh, try to get our hands on them and rock also, them on the show. Also, anyone that has a black one, a.k.a. LAFC and Inter Miami, hit me up. Let me know. Yeah, those are the sweat. Those are the I sweat need hiders. that black jersey. Now, I really like in I, I do like the Inter Miami one. It is it is black, but it has the kind of herons jumping out. Yeah. And I like the pink on the sleeves and the pink sock maybe down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that had they flip flopped it and made it majority pink with the black accent, missed opportunity. It would be just fire. But that may be coming. Uh, you know, maybe next year. Who knows? I, They're I, working on those jerseys right now. I think they should lean into that. Okay, I did like Toronto FCs too. Sorry we didn't get out a shout or your teams. Let us know what you think. Hit us in the mailbag. Alejandro Pozuelo. Like that was my transition. Alejandro Pozuelo, a little uh, <laughs> chat with him. Best 11 in his first season in the league. Let's take a listen. It's Pozuelo. Pozuelo! Ten minutes with Alejandro Pozuelo. Alejandro, thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you. How is your English? Yeah, now a little bit better, but no perfect. My Spanish isn't perfect either, <laughs> so maybe we'll trade a little bit. <laughs> okay. Tell me about this journey to come to Major League Soccer to Toronto FC. How did it happen? What was so exciting about being here? Now everything good. From I come here from the first day. The people also in the in the city, the people in the club, everything is perfect. So the welcome here. The league also, I think the more difficult in the league is the travel, you know. It's long travel sometimes and difficult for play with different time. But for the moment, everything is perfect. Why now for you? Why did you decide that this was the right time in your career? I don't know. I have 28 years when I come here, 27, and I think it's my best moment for show uh, what I need to do. So I think also the project from Toronto. I know when Tor- uh, when Jovinko leave uh, the difficult team for from Toronto for uh, help with the other player. So the project they they give me, I want to to do my best from from Toronto. So I think this is my best moment. How much responsibility did you feel? Because Jovinko, a yeah. massive player for Toronto FC. But I don't feel like uh, responsibility uh, because we play in different position. Uh, he play number nine. I play more like number 10, like midfielder. He play more in attacking. So when I come here, when I speak with the president, with the, with Ali, with the coach, he told me the same. Uh, you don't play in the same position, so don't need to be this responsibility like Jovinko. He scored a lot of goals. He, he play in different positions, so play what you want, play like you feel, and, and for the moment, it's okay. I still remember the first game you played. How can you forget that game? Yeah, I cannot, were, I cannot forget, for sure I cannot forget, because uh, it's a dream, because when you come to to the new team and you play uh, in this week, because I come uh, I come Saturday and I think I play next Saturday, so only one week with the, with the team and the coach give me this confidence, and it's amazing, the first game win for, for nothing, uh, again, new New York. I scored two goals, so and best. the and the chips. Yeah, two chip. Uh, yeah. When you see that opportunity, how do you see that opportunity? If, tell someone who has never done that in their life and never will to know that this is the moment. Yeah, I think the moment exactly uh, is perfect because when I come here, my first week, uh, everybody look at me because I'm new. Uh, first game, penalty. Uh, normally, Josi need to shoot, but he, he gave me this confidence. He told me, no, you are ready. I said, okay, no problem, I can shoot. So I think this is the moment for show something. And I think they also for the goalkeeper, 
it's difficult for him if he stay in the middle. I think he need to choose left or right. So I think the best moment is this one. Go for the Panenka. Why not? And yeah, then do it course. again later. Yeah, again the same <laughs> the same keeper, because I I remember uh, he I miss one penalty against him also in when we play in New New York, and in playoff he give me the same opportunity. So also the good moment because I know he it's difficult he stay in the middle. He want to shoot left or right. So. I see you smiling a little bit. That's yeah. got, it's got to feel good to do that in yeah. a game of that magnitude. Sometimes you need to show something, you know. If you if you miss, okay, you can miss also if you shoot left or right. You can you can miss, of course. And sometimes you need to do something. Yeah. What do you think of the league from a tactical perspective? How does it compare to Belgium or La Liga or the other places that you've been, Swansea, the Premier yeah, League? It's, it's compare is difficult. Difficult compare the league because in Spain and England, you know, England is more physical, more uh, attack, different, fast. And here it's more like you you can take the ball, you can play, you can, other tempo, you know, because the pressure when you play in Spain on the Premier League, uh, you have the pressure to go to second division. Here, you 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 don't have this pressure. You play for win. You play for for go to the playoff, but you don't have this pressure like uh, you need to win because we we can go to second division. And this pressure in in Europe is more difficult. You went to the final, almost won. Seattle Sounders got their second title in three years. Best eleven, a great season for you. Yeah. I'm also curious who you thought the best team you played against was. Who were you most impressed by? Uh, I think Atlanta. When we play in Atlanta, we feel I feel like this is a very good team. And also the atmosphere. Uh, we win there in playoff. We win there the final. But we have no lucky. But we have some, uh, yeah, a little bit, um, I don't know the... the un poco duro, si, a little grit. Yeah, so I think Atalanta, they have really good team and th I think they do good this year because they have good players. Josie, you, Michael, Toronto FC in 2020, what are your expectations? Yeah, I expect uh, like in 2019. Uh, I think we need to do the same. We need to go to the final. First, we need to go to the playoff. This is the most important in the in the league. And after, play and enjoy. And if we can go to the to the final again, this is the moment for for win. Do people call you, your friends from Spain or Belgium, yeah. otherwise, and say, "What's this league like? Should I come?" Yeah, of course. A lot of friends that play in Europe want to come to to play here in MLS because I told you in two, three, four years. The MLS will be one of the best in the in the in the world. All right, we'll take more Alejandro Pozuelos. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. No man. problem. Thank you. More magic to come from Alejandro Pozuelo in Toronto FC this year, maybe with another DP. We shall see on Pablo Piatti. Let's get into the mailbag. We've chewed up all the time with CBA as well as jerseys and the news dump and everything else. Monday we have a long list, don't we, Dave? Four zero one two zero six zero MLS. Extra time at MLSsoccer .com. I just, we're, you know, we're kind of rushing. It's Brett from Kentucky is going to get the uh, stage today. What up, Kentucky? What's the, uh, do you want me to read it? I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can read it. You're uh, Brett, I like Brett's this. Brett's coming in hot. He, real hot. I guarantee, he says, that Jurgen Locadia, I'm assuming the Kentucky that he's from is the one that's bordering Cincinnati, just across the river. Jurgen Locadia scores more than Chicharito in 2020. Here for this. <laughs> Here to help Brett get a little bit dose of reality. What do you think? Does Jurgen Locadia have a chance of doing this? Will he do it? Uh, yes, he has a chance because I think he's going to. What, what did we put it at? 12 and a half? 12 and a half we put it at. And I went over on that. And now, look, to get 12 and a half more, the over, he would need to have his deal extended, which would cost FC Cincinnati a large sum of money. Yeah, but if he's. Right. But if he's scoring goals, yeah, that's yeah, why they, they probably him will in. exercise it. Uh, but I think Chicharito is going to go over 20. This year. So I think Locadia can, but not because Chicharito is going to struggle. That means Locadia will have like a huge deal. Does PK, a huge, huge year. Does PK responsibility matter here? Does Chicharito get the PKs with Pavone and Katai yes. and 
Yeah, Chicharito gets those. So he's yeah. going to rack those up. Yes. Yeah. Well, Katia, would he get those with Kubo and Regatin and I maybe a 10? So. You assume so, right? Yeah. Okay. He also, I think he actually scored a PK for Hoffenheim like a month or two. Oh, he back, did. Yeah, even he when did. he was there on loan. Yeah, he did. So clearly he's good at that. So he's good at that. What do you think, Suze? Analysis. This way out there? Sorry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> My, <laughs> hate, to, hate to break it to you, buddy. But uh, yeah, no, ain't no chance. Probably. He's, he's probably going to be on that side, too. Going to just go ahead and say, I think it's Chicharito sorry. in this case. But I do think, sorry. as I said before, you're going to cut you plus 12 and a half. I'm over. Mm. I'm over Shout on that out one. Big Blue Nation, uh, John Trainer on the Revs. We've got you in here. Mike from South Carolina. We've got you in here on Storch Cup. Uh, Bill Carroll, Risto? the legend. Yeah, Risto. Bill Carroll talking about how he's actually uh, not that disappointed and kind of happy about the Red Bulls offseason. He's here. Eric in Fort Worth, you're here as well. Dean in Columbus, or Dan in Columbus. Let's do this one. What do you think of the Will Trap to Miami trade? From the Columbus perspective, I was initially disappointed, surprised by the price. Uh, but the more I think about it, the, I don't think it was terrible business. Trap, final year of his contract, unlikely to resign. Miami, taking on the full salary on the budget. And Porter has a bunch of depth there. With this move, Columbus has roster flexibility, and they can add reinforcements, and Miami get well trapped. Dave, you've been, I think, uh, the most bullish on this one. So I don't disagree with any of the reasons. I just think they could have gotten more. I still contend. I understand it's the last of his deal. He's a captain in Major League Soccer at 26 didn't who they, plays for the National Team. Didn't they say, team. though, didn't they say that this was in conjunction with Will Trapp, that they basically did the player – sort of a, not a favor on this one, but they knew what he meant to Columbus, what he'd meant for the club. And so they said, hey, do you, where do you want to go? We'll make it happen for you. We don't want to eat the 600K because we have players in your position yeah. that are going to play over you. Once again, still think they could have gotten more. Okay, but isn't Now this... it may have changed because he might be a free agent after this year now yeah. with the way things are structured. So be. that changes things because you Some have less math. control. And also it changes what the allocation is worth as we go through this new CBA. And I don't have a problem like sending him to Miami. I don't think it matters that he stays in the East and all that stuff. And I think it's a good pickup for Miami. I like that move. I still contend, though, that you look around the league and he could he would be a starter locked down for like six or seven teams. So where was that huh? opportunity to get them all in a room or well, get them on the phone and say, this is what we're getting from Miami? Maybe that's reflective of the market. Because it had to be other teams calling if they were interested. So that's what the deal is. I like Will Trap to Miami as well. Uh, yeah, that's it for us. We will be back on Monday with much more, including a whole lot of your mail. By the way, we are working on something very special for the mailbag to come in the future. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's a tease with no details. <laughs> we'll Classic see you next week, lady. everybody. <laughs>